I'm not going to see the slides, so I'm going to look at them. Okay, uh, welcome to my talk. Sorry for the technical problems. Uh, my name is uh, Bartosz Gołaszewski. You can call me Bart. Uh, my talk is going to be about the little project that I uh, created and maintain uh, called libgpid. So I've been around for uh, close to 15 years uh, doing all kinds of uh, stuff. I do kernel development, uh, user space, uh, bootloader, RTOS. Um, I maintain the GPIO subsystem in the kernel. I created the, the subject of today's talk, uh, that is the libgpiod project. Uh, I contribute significantly to Yocto and MetaOpen Embedded, and I also recently picked up interest in Zephyr, which has led me to becoming the maintainer of LVGL, of the graphical stack. So uh, how many of you have ever used libgpiod? Okay, so, so uh, for, for those who haven't, uh, here's a, a little recap. So. Uh, even though we, as the GPIO maintainers, try to push for mostly writing drivers in the kernel space that uh, use GPIOs, uh, m many users still want to control them from user space. And historically, this role has been fulfilled by the SysFS GPIO class uh, that has existed for, for many years. But for many reasons, this interface um, has many shortcomings, and this has led us to creating the GPIO character device. So the character device has been released uh, with, in, in Linux for the first time in 2016. Um, and uh, as such, as, as a character device, it requires you to use uh, a lot of, uh, well, it requires you to use low-level C code to interface with it using system calls. I actually read, write, open, close. Uh, and so that has led many people to just simply bounce off of the new interface. Uh, for that, we created libgpiod, which wraps that functionality um, in, a, in, a, in a convenient C API, and also uh, provides high-level high level language bindings and a set, of, a set of command line tools that allow you to replace your shell scripts that would otherwise use sysfs with, um, with calls to the, to, the, to the command line programs. Um, so if you want to imagine the, the whole stack, it looks like this. At the very bottom in the kernel space, you have the GPIO drivers, uh, independent GPIO drivers that talk directly to the hardware. Then on top of that, you have the GPIO abstraction layer called uh, GPIO lib that provides uh, interfaces for drivers to provide resources and for, for GPIO drivers to uh, provide resources and for other drivers to use them. And on top of this, uh, we have the layer that exposes the character device to user space. And then the GPIO, libgpiod project is uh, the first layer in user space. It's comprised of the core C library, language, high-level language bindings built on top of that, um, and the GPIO tools, which are the command line tools, and then users can, use, can create their programs based uh, on the, on the on, on, the, on top of the library or uh, command, line sh command line tools using the provided tools. So uh, this project, when, when I started writing it, it was part-time uh, professional assignment, part-time pet project, and it turned out that I was, uh, I, I was caught by surprise by the fact that su suddenly when I released it, uh, distros packaged it, people started using it, and I started receiving uh, a lot of uh, mail with, uh, back, like with issue, uh, with issues and, 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 and problems being raised. Uh, and then th this was the, the, the way I, I learned that uh, API design is actually pretty hard. Um, and it's easy to commit various uh, problems, various errors. And, and the problem with that is that uh, a library, library's interface is usually carved in stone. So uh, unless you do a next major release, you're, you're stuck with your problems. Um, and the lessons learned during the development are that you should always plan to throw the first version away anyway. Um, this is why so many, so many uh, projects have, um, have multiple major releases, but also that you may not know what you don't know. So in, in my case, it was, um, I wasn't aware that many um, people that work with hardware will not be experts in low-level Linux interfaces, and they will simply not understand certain concepts, and I should have made it easier for them to get into uh, the, the, the project than, than I initially did. Uh, and another thing is knowing your programming languages. When I started working on that, I, I was completely confident with C, but uh, my Python was more that of a C developer writing Python, and my C++ was uh, outdated. 
Uh, but anyway, um, so those questions are relevant both to kernel interfaces and user space uh, projects because uh, we, we, we already had to redesign the GPIO interface in the kernel, the, the character device which, about which I'm, I'm going to be talking in a, in a second. But uh, yeah, for, first and foremost, it's, it's, it's important for uh, user space. So uh, before I go into libgpio dv2 itself, uh, the character device v2. Um, the thing about the kernel interface is that uh, we released it in 2016. We were pretty happy with uh, ourselves. Uh, but then the users started coming up with ideas for extensions. They said, okay, so now we have a reliable uh, event queuing, uh, e event reporting to user space, but uh, we cannot uh, configure the demands period. So uh, what good is that? Uh, and it was uh, these requests were, were valid, but it turns out that uh, the way we designed the API well, was kind of by omission, uh, was not ready to be extended. Um, we, we didn't leave any paddings and padding in structures and, and committed some, 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 some other uh, mistakes that uh, made it uh, difficult or impossible to, to extend the, the character device. So uh, last year, we released the new uh, kernel interface for the, for the GPIO character device which came, comes with a lot of new features. So you can now configure the debounce period for your uh, interrupt reporting. Um, you, can, uh, you can read the sequence number of events in case for some reason the events are reported in the wrong uh, order, which sometimes happens. Uh, you can now set the, configure the pull up, internal pull-down pull, pull resistors uh, in GPIO controllers. Um, you can uh, use different clocks for timestamping, and also you can uh, watch, be informed by the kernel about changes in status of lines, because for the chips we have U events, but for separate lines we, we didn't have any mechanism to, to be informed about, about changes uh, in their state, like being requested, released, uh, reconfigured. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, one of the most important, uh, probably the most important uh, fe new feature is the complex uh, configuration for requests about which I'm going to be talking in a, in a minute when discussing the library. And also this time we uh, paid attention to make the, the kernel uh, API extensible so that if any valid request for a new feature comes up, uh, this time we should be able to uh, fulfill it. So. Uh, a little statement. I really tried my best to release the library before um, before this presentation, but um, we don't want to rush it. We we want to do every, everything right this or as many things as possible right this time. And so the libgpi dv2 is not out yet, but the API, at least for the C and C++ parts, are uh, the interfaces are are complete. Likely to not, not not likely to change much. The Python part is still reviewed, but also is pretty much complete. Should get merged uh, soon. Uh, we will still do some reworks to the GPIO tools. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about it in, in a minute, but uh, there have been some, some uh, requests for the, for the tools. Uh, many people have complained about certain things, so this is going to be uh, reworked too. And I really hope that uh, the library can be released before ELC 22 in Dublin, and I hope to be able to present it over there. So libgpiod v2. Uh, my goals for this uh, for this major release were sorry, were to uh, make the usage more intuitive, because certain design decisions in the V1 uh, made it so that uh, certain things were were complicated and uh, convoluted, not very intuitive, and, and re required to read docs and, uh, and and look at examples to to understand. So my first goal was to make the usage as intuitive as possible. Make it less, make it more difficult to commit any any programming errors, uh, and for the high-level bindings, Python and C++, to allow very short code and perform whatever you need to to do uh, in in the least code um, code possible and least lines of code possible. And also, uh, the main mistake with V1 was that we tried to really replicate and, and represent the, the kernel model for GPIOs, the data model in, that, that GPIO uses in kernel in user space. So this time, we tried to simply make it work, work well without necessarily uh, trying to follow the kernel model. So in the kernel, it looks something like this. You have the providers and the consumers. So the provider is usually a GPIO controller. It exports a set of lines. And then the consumers, what they do, they request lines for exclusive usage. And these lines are represented in kernel as uh, struct GPIO, the desk, the descriptor per, uh, per line 
and you can also package them in, in special containers, uh, which are called, I think, GPIO D desk array or something like this. So in V1, I tried to follow that model. So the chip structure, oh, now, by the way, so I'm not gonna bore you with uh, code, code snippets in slides because nobody looks at them anyway, so I'm, I'm just gonna present diagrams that represent the data model uh, and, and for, for the code examples, uh, you can look it up uh, in the repository. So when you open a character device, you get the chip structure. And this chip structure allows you to query the chip for various information and also allows you to get line or get line, multiple lines in, in a special co container that we refer to as uh, line bulk. And uh, this, this looks like the, what we do in the kernel, except that at this point, when you call the get line, it's not the line that you get, the object that you get, is not yet, uh, that does not yet represent the line requested for uh, exclusive usage. And yeah, so th this, this, is, uh, this is a bit confusing, and in order to avoid that, and also the duplication of get line, get line bulk, we approach it differently in uh, V2. So in V2, it, like, it looks like this. You still open the chip, and you still get a chip handle, except that now you have to call either get info or get line info, and you will get objects that represent either the chip information at a given moment or the line information for the line at given offset. So these are these structures that you see, see here, that these are immutable uh, snippets of, inf I'm sorry, in, in, immutable snapshots of information at given moment. So unlike uh, what happens in, in V1, when you have a line and you query its information, like uh, if, it, if, it's, if it's used, what is the direction or what are other settings, these settings can change in the kernel, but we have no way of uh, updating uh, the, or rather, of informing the user of those changes. We can update the line, you can update it and see if it changed, but uh, there's no dynamic way of uh, being informed about any, any change. Uh, so it's, the user may think that the line has certain properties, but it no longer has them in the, in the kernel. Now it's clear that the info objects that we are returning are snapshots of information at the moment of the call. And we can also be informed now about uh, any changes about which I'm, I'm gonna be talking in a second. So next thing is requesting lines for exclusive usage. So you take the line objects or line bulk objects that, you, that were returned in, in, in the previous call and you have to request them now. This is V1. So you, this leads to certain confusion because these lines can, you can, for instance, take uh, several lines, request some of them, then package them together in a container called, uh, like in a single in a single container, and then try to uh, do various, perform various operations on these lines, like read values or set them or wait for events, except that this will not work for the non-requested lines. So this leads to confusion. Uh, it requires additional error checking in the library and uh, has lots of corner cases. So now, what, what, what are we doing in V2? In V2, you, get the, you, ha, you still have the chip object that you, that you got in the previous call, and you do request lines, and this, re, this returns a new object that's called uh, line request. So this line request is the single point of entry for all line operations. So now you use this request structure to read lines, set them, wait for events, uh, reconfigure them, everything. And also what is interesting is that now the objects are disconnected. They, 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 are, not, uh, they, they are not interdependent. So you can request your lines and then close the chip, forget about it, uh, free the resources, and, and you can continue using the request for, uh, just for the lines that, that, are, uh, that are needed. Um, so the configuration, when, when requesting the lines, you need to configure your request. You need to set all the, all the properties of the lines, uh, direction, default output values, uh, whether you want to watch interrupts or not. And in V1, we have a single uh, request uh, config structure, which not only uh, is not opaque, which uh, makes it hard to extend it, but also is uh, used both for um, requesting the lines for the first time and then reconfiguring them, which uh, makes it so that it, it contains information that, are, that is not needed for, uh, or, or cannot even be used at, at, uh, when, when reconfiguring the lines. So in V2, we have split the configuration into two stages or, or two parts. There is the request config that contains information such as which lines at which offsets to, uh, to request, uh, what, uh, what, what is the, cons the name of the, of the consumer, what is the buffer size for the, for the kernel buffer for the interrupt queue, uh, and the line config which contains exact properties for the requested lines. Their output values, uh, direction, bias, drive, settings, uh, and, and whatnot. 
So this is, and the first one, the, the request config is used together with line config when requesting the lines, but when reconfiguring the same request, you only use the line config. Next thing is the uh, reading the events. So previously, again, so you, you see this, this pattern of, of duplicating the interfaces for uh, lines and, and sets of lines, which is, uh, well, you, you get this duplication, but also it, 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 uh, it makes it so that it's more, um, it's more difficult to, to check for, uh, for all the corner cases. Um, so this is how you would read events. You would have your line object, you would use the interfaces for, for polling them, and then um, read the, the events either from a single line or from a bulk, which actually, if you have several lines requested at once, they would share the file descriptor. Again, uh, another, another uh, thing that, that makes, it, makes it confusing. And so in V2, what we did is we, so again, the request, uh, is the is, is your point of entry? We have a helper structure about which I'm going to be talking in a second. That is called edge event buffer. You pull for events. You, you pull the request for events. You read them from the from the request into the buffer, and then from the buffer you can get it. Uh, you can read separate events, and we do that because it's a way for us to avoid unnecessary memory memory allocations, uh, which I'll, I'll be describing in a, in a, in a second. So um, now about watching the, the changes in, in the status of lines. So as I, as I said previously, in V1, we have this uh, problem where something like, let's say you get your line handles from your chip and then someone requests those lines. Unless you try to actively request them and fail or when you try to, when, when, un, un, unless you regularly reread the information, you will not be informed that they have that something with them has changed. Uh, if a chip appears in the system, you get a new event. If, if a line gets requested or released, you, you get you get nothing. So now we have a separate mechanism that is called watch, like line info watch. And when you call on your chip the the watch line info function, it works like get line info. So what 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 it will do first is it will return you the snapshot of the information about the line. But uh, immediately it will start watching this specific line for any future changes. And if such a change happens, so if a line gets requested, released, reconfigured, um, I, I think that, 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 that that's all, you're gonna get a, um, an event, it's called, we, we call it info event, that you will be able to, so the, the, the chip has a file descriptor you can pull or you can use dedicated functions. It will raise a flag, you will get, in, get uh, notif notified by that, that there is an event pending, you read it, and then in this event you, you know what type of event happened, what is its timestamp, and also you get new line information. So this event contains the changed line, line info about this line. So if it, uh, the, I have an example here. So you have the chip, and let's say you call your watch line info on it and you get your line information. It says that the line isn't used. And then someone comes and requests the line, either in the kernel or in user space. So the re request line happens and you get notified about the new event pending, you read it. Uh, and now the line info read from that event says that the line is now used, which makes it so that we can now easily monitor anything that happens with GPIOs. Uh, so this is uh, the event buffer that I was talking about. So in order to, well, it, uh, reading lots of events seems like the, the use case that, uh, is, um, that sh should be made as fast as possible. Um, this is from what, what I get from, from, the, from the mail I uh, get from users. Uh, so right now we have this container that you allocate once, the, the edge event buffer and you read your events into it. So the memory for the events is, is, uh, is, is part of that edge events buffer. So whenever you read new events, it doesn't get reallocated. They are, your events are stored in the buffer and then you can either get your event and this returns you a pointer to the event in the buffer, which lives, uh, whose lifetime is tied to, the, to that of the, of the edge event buffer or you can copy the event and then you can, uh, it can survive the, the, the parent container. This is, uh, this, this is how it works in, in C, but also because many, many users that require speed still, uh, 
that you don't want to use Python for, for, for speed reasons, use C++. In C++, we have a whole uh, mechanism of uh, making sure that if you, unless you copy the event, uh, or unless you get it by, by non-constant reference, it's not copied, then if you get by, uh, if, 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 you, if you get the event from the buffer by, uh, by non-constant reference, it will be uh, copied behind the scenes. So this is, uh, I think this works pretty nicely. So the, probably the most important feature that we have right now, and this is really important for the unified uh, line request, are the configuration overrides. So we have this uh, line config structure, and let's say you, you want to uh, request eight lines. Then you will set the default configuration for it. You will say, okay, I want it to be in input mode, I want to watch uh, rising and falling edge events on all lines by default, I want to set uh, the pull up resistor and I want to use the real time clock for the timestamps. But also in the same request, you can set overrides for, a cer for certain lines. So you can take an offset and set, uh, set its direction to output, drive it to some specific value and also uh, set whatever you can, you can, you can, you can make the drive, uh, you can set the drive option to the setting to, to open source or other and uh, override the, the default uh, output value or the bounce period or whatnot. So this allows you to create these very complex uh, configurations if you need that. Um, there are limitations of that, so the, so the library doesn't set any limitations on, on what, what the user wants to do, but when at the moment of, of making the request, the kernel will uh, try to uh, the library will try to translate this into uh, into into the kernel configuration, and because the kernel has uh, has a limited size of the structure that can pass to it during the request, uh, these um, these configuration options can simply become too complex. In which case, we're simply going to fail the request. Uh, next thing that is interesting are the sequence numbers. So every edge event, the interrupt by being reported to user space has um, the global sequence number and the local sequence number, like per line. So the global is for all the lines in a given request, and the local is sequence number is for sequence number is for uh, for, this, for a single line, for a single offset. So it looks like this: you get the first edge event for offset zero. So both the line and global se 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 sequence numbers will be one. Then you get another for offset zero. Now the line se sequence, again, both will be the same, but it's gonna be two. Then you get a third event, this time for a different offset. So now the line sequence number will be one for this line because it's our first, and then the global sequence number will still be uh, incremented by one to three, and then the last edge event uh, back to zero and Oh, oh, the, the, the sequence number local is three, uh, global is four, and uh, this is how it works. So this allows you, if you are reading lots of events, and it may so happen that they get uh, reported in, in, a, in, a, in a wrong order to the user space, you can always uh, get them back um, in order, for instance, if you want to implement some kind of bit banging or, or something else that requires you to use uh, proper ordering. Um, we have a new, so libgpidv one uses uh, the kernel uh, module called GPIO mockup for testing. It exports uh, simulated GPIO chips, uh, except that uh, this, model, this module uh, has been around for years and it requires, uh, to un it requires users to unload the module and reload it again in order to change any configuration. When you want to run lots of tests uh, with different chip configurations, we need to unload them and reload them uh, all the time, and also had a very limited, um, very lim limited set of configuration options uh, that would be passed by uh, mod kernel module parameters. So you have a new kernel uh, test module for uh, GPIOs. It's called GPIO Sim. This one works differently. This one works with uh, using configFS and sysfs. So you, wh wh how, how it works? You have your configFS directory for GPIO Sim. Inside it, you create a new GPIO device. Then inside it, you create one or more GPIO banks, and you enable the GPIO device uh, using a special parameter, and then bam, in sysfs, there is uh, a new GPIO device that pops up um, with a number of banks that you configured, and you can, from, you, you says, from sysfs, from, from special attributes that we export, you can control it, uh, you can, set the lines that would be reported to the user that uses, uh, well, it, it, the chip technically can be used in the kernel, but it's mostly aimed at, at libgpid. So libgpid can 
uh, you can set the values that libgpid would read, or you can read the values that libgpid is setting, and this allows for uh, easy testing of both the GPIO character device, libgpid, and uh, the GPIO system in general. So we have a, a, a huge set of tests that uh, try to uh, verify that all corner, corner, courses, corner uh, cases uh, work fine. Um, so general uh, new features of the, of the library. So this time all C objects are opaque as they should be. Um, we simply expose all kinds of interfaces for, uh, for controlling them. All C classes have their implementation uh, hidden so that uh, ABI changes are, are no longer, we don't risk changing the ABI unnecessarily. Python interface has been reworked uh, and consulted with some Python experts so that it really, uh, this time it follows uh, all, the, all the guidelines for Python. And we have Rust bindings coming up. Uh, Viresh Kumar is uh, taking care of that and I, I hope we can get them in soon. Um, we have some reworks to the GPIO tools. So uh, we're gonna have a new program that's gonna be, be called GPIO Watch, uh, which will allow us to, to use the, the, the InfoWatch uh, interface to uh, be informed by any changes to, to uh, lines. We will have an interactive mode for GPIO set. So uh, an issue that many users have raised is that GPIO set doesn't keep the lines uh, so you, 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 run, you have to keep GPIO set, the GPIO set program alive in order to drive the lines. So we have an interactive mode now, which, which well, it's still, you still have to keep the process alive and it will stay like this because this is how inherently the GPIO character device works. But this time we will have a, a proper uh, explicit interactive mode and that will say, okay, this is the, the console for your GPIOs. So this is coming up. Uh, we will be able to specify lines by name because uh, we have this uh, program for finding the names, but you would have to find the names and then put, put them in some kind of variables and, and then pass them over to, to libgpi, to, to any, any program that, you, that uh, refers to them by, um, by, number, by numbers by default. So you have to translate names to numbers. Now all the programs will be able to refer to lines by their names. Uh, and why are we making it? So this is the only code sample that I'm posting. This is just, uh, so the library right now has 20,000 20, lines of code, but this is all so that you can use five lines of code to get the desired effects uh, if you're using, for instance, Python or C++ or Rust in, in, in the future. So C, is, C being C is, is much more elaborate, but uh, yeah, this, this is an example of how to request a set of lines and watch them for events in Python and print the events. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is quite simple. Um, okay, so I, I, I only have three minutes left. So uh, these are the links. So the first is obviously the repository. Uh, we have the branch that is called nextlibgpid2.0. Uh, this is the branch where all the code lives right now. It's gonna soon be merged into master and gonna release uh, a release candidate. Development happens on the Linux GPIO mailing list. Please uh, help us review the new interface. Um, I, I will soon repost the, the entire series. If you're subscribed to Linux GPIO, you can uh, help us review. And special thanks to Kent Gibson, who's uh, from Perth uh, who in Australia, who helped me immensely with this uh, interface. He uh, does an amazing job reviewing patches and also is behind most of the code uh, for the character device in the kernel. Um, and uh, yes, well, I will take uh, questions. I, I made it in time. Yeah? Uh, are we, do we have a microphone? Quick um, one, Bartos. When we enable preempt RT, for example, yeah. um, if you go into your code example, what level of noise are we expecting within, uh, let's say, read event, and how are we, uh, is there any sense in expecting consistency in that noise between versions of GPOVD? Are you guys doing any time, any sort of uh, timing analysis for the flow through from user space all the way from to kernel? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what, what you refer to as noise. Um, the time taken from user space application that is calling into lib mm -hmm. GPRD, let's say uh, read event, right? To the point where I get the value back. How consistent is that time now, time period? If I put it in a loop, for example. It's, uh, I don't have the answer now. I haven't tried it with uh, our preempt RT. It's a, it's a good question. I, I, w I will uh, run some tests and uh, 
So for, for in general, it's it's pretty consistent without preempt RT. I, I don't have the answer for preempt RT. No. But that's a good point. I, I I will get back to it. Okay. Oh, there's a question. Can you space uh, drive students for some of the uh, special, like uh, in the driver, the uh, you can manipulate the register directly, but uh, is this uh, allowed to set some some other character for those pins? Like uh, you, you, you cannot, uh, so the, the, the whole goal of libgpid is so that you cannot uh, modify like write the registers of the controllers. Right. It's, it's a whole abstraction layer on, on top of the driver. Right, so it's in the libgpi or the, uh, in the API, do you have a place to specify drive strings like uh, some of the uh, pull up, pull down? Yeah, 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 like, it has all sorts of options. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mention all of them, but uh, there was a, like the, if you go to, to the current V2 uh, branch and you build the docs, you will see all kinds, like if you go to the line config configuration, like the structure, you will see all kinds of uh, options that you can set. Okay. It's quite extensive. Yeah. You can override them. You can set defaults. You can set all kinds of values. Yeah. Compared you can to say the, set the internal pull up, pull, pull downs resistor. You can sell, set, set the way how the lines will be dra driven, like push pull, open source, open drain. Yes. Uh, you yeah. can set uh, you know your own debounce period and yeah. Okay. All pretty right. much, pretty much everything that you would want to use from user space is available. Okay, but what if uh, some chip doesn't support that? Oh, it will either fail or depend, it depends on what the driver does. Some drivers just ignore these configuration options. Oh, okay. Some drivers return uh, errors, like it, operation not supported, and it will just do whatever dr the driver returns. Right, makes sense. Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you so much.